This is Ellison Barber in Chattooga County, Georgia. It's an area nestled in the rural hills of the state where the race between Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican football legend Herschel Walker could determine the balance of power in Washington. While Georgia narrowly went for Joe Biden in 2020, Chattooga County is reliably red, voting 80 percent for Donald Trump. I hear people say they feel overlooked, they feel forgotten. Do you feel like that's true here? Definitely, definitely. As you think number of votes, you know, you go where the, the bigger votes are. You go and you check on those people a little bit more. Dane Maddox is a small business owner who grew up here. His top issue, the economy. Politically, he leans right. I think voting is important because it's that one little bit, you know, left of our voice that still gets heard. 86% of the people who live in this county are white. 9.7% have college degrees. Textile factories have closed and good paying jobs close to home are hard to find. We lost uh, part of a whole manufacturing facility. Nobody knew about it because nobody talks about a small town. Except Maddox feels that former President Donald Trump did. What a crowd this is. While in office, Trump spoke in a town about 30 minutes away. What did it mean to you when you had a politician, a sitting president, come so close to where you live? I think it was important. It was huge. It gave you a little glimpse that somebody cared. And in politics, proximity can pay off. Two years ago, Trump won 65 percent of the rural vote. Among white rural voters, his support jumped to 71 percent. It's the kind of edge Republicans will need if they are to win back Congress this midterm and they just might have that edge. This is Antonia Hilton, 400 miles to the east in Anson County, North Carolina. Also rural, also in a key state that could determine control of the Senate, given the close race between Republican Congressman Ted Budd and Democrat Sherry Beasley, former Chief Justice of the state Supreme Court. And while Anson may look similar to Chattooga on the surface, this county is nearly 50 percent black and leans Democratic, but recently black voter participation has dropped. Do black rural people feel seen? No. James Flowers served in the Army for six years before returning to Anson to raise his eight-year-old daughter. He loves his country. He's just not sure his country loves him. People just don't understand until you actually walk in our shoes. Even now, when I get pulled over, they will be aggressive until they see that military ID and then, oh, it's buddy buddy. James says he won't vote, not until he feels politicians are working for him to come and talk to the people, seriously, or just let them ask you questions. In 2020, 2,500 voters of color in Anson sat out the last election. Sherry Beasley lost her re-election bid for chief justice by just 401 votes. Were you able to vote last year? No, I didn't vote last year. Cynthia Wallace is the founder of the nonpartisan New Rural Project, started after the 2020 election. We saw a 12 to 14 percent gap between white voters and voters of color in every single one of these um, rural counties. Back in Chattooga, voters like Dane Maddox don't need convincing to show up November 8th. Do you vote every election? Every election. Because um, it still, still matters. Small voice matters. While in Anson, James Flowers is focused on his daughter, not the midterms. It is crazy how much talent is out here. But people don't have no hope. Two counties, both vying to be seen. Ellison Barber, NBC News, Chattooga County, Georgia. And Antonia Hilton, NBC News, Anson County, North Carolina. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.